Brian and Larry in the house today. And Larry, I want to you know bring to people's attention this uh, this story that uh, that uh, is in the in the Washington Post today about uh, Trump believes that uh, he may be able to get fourteen hundred delegates. At least that's what his campaign is saying. Well, okay, so this is an internal memo that has been leaked, and the right. Washington Post got it right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, turning now to uh, Jake Tapper from CNN, maybe he has some thoughts about this. So the campaign says fourteen hundred people, fourteen hundred delegates uh, are attainable. Uh, before we get to the convention, is that uh, in sync with what you see? It's not quite in sync with what the people we have projecting delegates think is likely. Um, and or and 1,400 seems really, really high. It is possible. Our, our delegate counters think it is possible uh, that Trump can enter the convention with the number of delegates necessary to secure uh, 1,300 is what, 1327. And, and, uh, a lot of that would be from lobbying people who are, um, these delegates that get to decide what they want to do when they get to the convention. Uh, but the idea of, you know, the last contest is over and Trump has 1,400 delegates is, let's just say it's bullish at best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, I mean, and Ted Cruz, though, is mathematically eliminated from getting to 1237, but that's really not his strategy, and he doesn't care about that, right? Yeah, I mean, well, Cruz says nobody can get to 1237. That's not actually accurate. Trump still possibly can. It is still potentially uh, feasible for him. Um, not likely, but feasible. Um, yeah, Cruz and Kasich have long said that, uh, well, Kasich has long said it, and Cruz is now acknowledging it, that uh, this will have to be, for them to be the nominee, a, a convention fight, uh, and having the, the contest go to more than the first ballot, the second ballot, the third ballot, et cetera. And you heard Mitch McConnell the other day say that he was optimistic that this would go to the second ballot, clearly signaling that he is uh, desirous of someone other than Mr. Trump. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny that he used the word optimistic because that does suggest that that's his hope, uh, which probably is not. You know, the, the, again, the, these are the things that are making people concerned. I don't about, think people are shocked by that, about actually. the party <laughs> uniting behind whomever the nominee might be. Uh, and Jake, and that's that's sort of the question that I have in terms of Donald Trump's uh, demeanor over the last two weeks. Uh, you know, his rallies are still his rallies, but in terms of his on-air persona, his victory speech in New York, which was short and on message, the fact that he hasn't done Sunday shows, which I'm sure, uh, you know, annoys you, but uh, he hasn't done those in a couple of weeks. Are we seeing a shift, and is it because of Manafort? It, it seems to be that, that whether it's because of Paul Manafort or Rick Wiley or a combination thereof or somebody being able to say to Donald Trump, hey, if you want this, you really need to, you know, check yourself before you wreck yourself. As you <laughs> uh, and, he's, and he's taking the advice. Uh, now, uh, it is interesting that, you know, he was very respectful Tuesday night referring to Ted Cruz as Senator Cruz. And then yesterday afternoon, he was back to calling him Lion Ted yes. at rallies. Uh, that is, you know, not consistent. So I wouldn't say that he's, he's uh, the, the, you know, it, it's entirely a, a, a makeover, um, but he's at least taking some advice. And you're right. I, I, I don't like this not being available on Sunday shows. I don't think necessarily, by the way, that like not answering questions from, reporters who ask tough questions is uh was a problem necessarily for mr trump um you know he he uh, he now seems to only really take a lot of questions from friendlier news outlets and um i don't know that that's necessarily good for a candidate i mean obviously i'm biased in this and i want him to come on my show chris matthews has ruined it for all of us clearly but but i (laughs) but i mean i do think that like facing questions from people who are not necessarily just you know Blackies and uh, and you know rooting for you right. is good. Is uh, I think that's not only of Donald Trump. I think that's of Ted Cruz and Hillary Clinton and everyone else. Certainly Hillary Clinton. Right. She's in a bubble out there on her side. Yeah, she doesn't do. She does not do a lot of these. She does Sunday shows the least. Ted Cruz is the second least. Um, so I, I don't. I don't understand why that is good necessarily. I guess it keeps you out of trouble, but in some ways it maybe also keeps you out of practice for taking questions. I mean, look, if you become the president. 
for the nominee, you're going to be taking tough yeah, questions right. at press conferences. So well, why not have some practice? Speaking of Hillary, I mean, it, it, is, it has been said by the Associated Press that she could lose every remaining primary in the coming weeks and still clinch the nomination. And if that is true, and, and I, I suspect that it probably is, then what should Bernie Sanders do now? I mean, I mean, what's his purpose? If he, there's no way he can win, what, what should be his strategy now, I wonder? He's in a tough spot because now you have even the group that supports him, MoveOn.org, saying that they do not like this idea that has been put out there by the Sanders campaign that um, even if Hillary leads in popular vote and pledge delegates and superdelegates, that uh, Bernie will go into the convention and try to sway enough superdelegates to send it his way, even though she has, you know, uh, had, you know, even even with her leading in popular vote and pledge delegates, and they say they don't want that. Um, so he is in a tough spot. The, you know, the, the grand irony of this is the person who created these proportional contests was Jesse Jackson back in 1984. That was one of the concessions that Walter Mondale offered him. And Bernie Sanders, of course, a big Jesse Jackson supporter back then. Right. I don't know that uh, if there were more winner-take-all uh, as opposed to proportional, uh, that things would be dramatically right. different. I think Hillary Clinton has won enough of the the bigger contests and obviously has a two and a half million vote popular vote lead uh but still uh it's a kind of ironic uh because if he if he were able to theoretically sweep winner take all states who knows what would happen there all right we got to leave it right there jake tapper cnn thank you so much